Computer? Computer? Ah. Hello, computer. The humble mouse changed the way we interact with computers, but the mice of today are light years ahead of the clunky hunks of beige plastic that brought graphical user interfaces into the mainstream. Gaming mice, the specialized pointing tool designed specifically to maximize your gaming experience, are the futuristic starships of the mouse world. If you know, you know. Here's to you, lads. Having a mouse that's comfortable, customizable, and responsive can be the difference between a win and a loss. But what are your options? Great news. There really is a massive selection of gaming mice, and some of them get pretty specialized. Like a great MMO mouse might not be the best for competitive esports, so we're focusing on three generalized suggestions that tick all the boxes for your average gaming and everyday needs. Things like ergonomics, battery life, software, and ease of customization. You know, the sort of things you might actually want in a gaming mouse. Beyond RGB, of course, which, by the way, adds 2% to your KD ratio. Kicking off our list is the Steel Series Rival 3 Wireless. I've actually been using the wired version of this gaming mouse for a long time now, and I bought it based on its price and positive word of mouth. The wireless version doesn't have a wire, obviously, and that alone makes a big difference. It makes a mouse I already like and have used for many, many hours even better. Initially, I wasn't too keen on having to provide my own pair of AA batteries. God, is this Russia? But the thing is, this little gaming mouse runs forever on those two little copper tops. Steel Series claims over 400 hours of battery life. You could also choose to connect wirelessly with Bluetooth or the 2.4 gigahertz USB receiver tucked neatly inside the battery compartment. You won't even know it's there. As far as using the mouse, the SteelSeries Rival 3 Wireless is a smooth operator. Clicks feel just right, with barely any effort required to click any of its buttons. At the same time, it's not so sensitive to where I found myself making accidental inputs. And the layout too is such that I never accidentally hit one of the buttons unless I made the conscious decision to do so. However, since this is a budget entry, it's lacking the selection of its more expensive contemporaries. There are just six buttons here, which about the lower limit of what I'd recommend for a gaming mouse. It also lacks the thumb rest of the other mice, so I end up dragging my thumb across my desk. That being said, it does move very nicely across pretty much whatever surface you're using it on. It's listed at 50 bucks, but look, you could probably get it for less than that, sometimes way less. Sometimes on par with the $25 wired model of the same mouse. Next on our list, a wired gaming mouse from Razer, the Basilisk V3. While I would prefer to not have to mess around with wires, I'm willing to forgive the Razer just because I really like how it feels in my hand. Of the three, probably my personal favorite ergonomically, and it's got plenty of great features, the best and the most RGB lighting and customization options provided you install Razer Synapse. <sighs> it's not so bad anymore. They've really done a good job on it. One of my favorite features is the button to unlock the scroll wheel from tactile to freewheeling mode. In other words, tactile mode has little clicks as you scroll, but activate the little button and boom, free scrolling. I will say, not the biggest fan of how it scrolls. It feels kind of gritty, I guess, almost. It's not as free as I would like it to be, but hey, it's a cool feature. And cooler still, you can jump into the software and turn on an option to have the mouse automatically switch between tactile and freewheeling based on how fast you scroll it. From a performance standpoint, the Basilisk has a ton of customization options, but I think my favorite of all is the DPI button located below the mouse wheel toggle button. On other gaming mice, the DPI switcher is located where my thumb sits, which is fine when I want to quickly shift from 1600 to 2400, but not so fine when I invariably hit it accidentally in the middle of a match. Where the sensitivity button normally sits is instead a sensitivity clutch. Hold it down and the mouse suddenly slows to a crawl. It's perfect for making precise movements and then jumping back to normal speed at will. I take it back. The clutch actually is my favorite feature of the Basilisk. Its MSRP is $69.99, which seems like a lot to ask of a wired mouse, but after using it, I feel like that's a totally fair price. 
the final and the most expensive mouse on our list today is the Logitech G502X. A wireless beauty, it's available in either white or black color schemes and has some very nice RGB highlights. As far as ergonomics, it's almost a dead heat with the Razer Basilisk, but it does come out on top. It glides more smoothly than any of the others I've talked about, but I do wish it were a little bit heavier. I don't know what magic coating they put on the glide pads, but man, is it slick. It feels totally solid in my hands, and it has that all-important thumb rest. The buttons all feel fantastic too, even the smaller ones. Sometimes those get overlooked, but on the G502X, they feel just as good as the left and right mouse buttons. Free scrolling, which, like the Basilisk, can be toggled on or off, is unbelievably smooth without feeling loose or sloppy. From a strictly aesthetic standpoint, the G502X is the clear winner. I mean, come on. It's a gorgeous performer too, with a rechargeable battery that lasts around 40 hours between charges. Charging from zero to full only takes about two hours, give or take, and you can just plug it in via the included USB to USB-C connector and use it as a wired mouse while it charges, if you must. The Logitech software to customize the G502X to your liking is some of my favorite, although what is up with everything wanting you to sign up for an account these days? I just want to set the button I use for melee attacks. I don't need special offers and news about upcoming products. The G502X is kind of surprisingly 2.4 gigahertz wireless only, so there's no Bluetooth option, but that's okay. Similar to the Basilisk, there's a clutch on the thumb side for the on-the-fly DPI drops, and DPI up and DPI down are mapped to a pair of buttons next to the left mouse button. Personally, I didn't like them there. But the Logitech software makes it stupid easy to disable or remap any of the buttons on the G502X. The clutch too comes with an extra cover, so if you don't like it, you can pop off the included button and replace it so it no longer darkens your door. So there you have it, three gaming mice to fit your needs and budget. Personally, and I didn't expect I'd feel this way going into this video, but I think the Basilisk might be my favorite in spite of being the only wired entry on this list. Look, hey, whoa, hold up. All three of them are great. And as I mentioned before, I've been using the wired version of the Rival 3 for a very long time and give it my full recommendation. The G502X is the prettiest of the three by far and it performs incredibly well with smoothness of glide and crispness of the buttons. But in my heart of hearts, I just really like the Razer. Okay, I wanna hear your suggestions for gaming mice, so please hit the comments below. I read them, even though sometimes it hurts my heart. For more PC gaming goodness, check out our review of the IONEO 2, and for everything else, keep it right here on IGN.